Yeah, so today we just with uh, Brother Nas here talking about the Muhammad and his revelations. I uh, just had some questions to ask him about it because um, obviously we have, theologically as Christians and Muslims, we do have a disagreement theologically in terms of like who's the final prophet and who's not. We take it as Jesus, where Muslims will take it as uh, Muhammad. So, um, just kind of wanted to ask a few questions about um, the revelation because I mean I done a little research into it and there were certain things that I thought because obviously we're all here to find the truth mm -hmm. you know and so sometimes I think we need to look at the evidence and then kind of come to a conclusion and a discussion about what we think is true so um, just want to ask your opinions on like Muhammad re receiving his revelation like mm -hmm. can you just tell us a, a, a bit about that and then I'll give my comments. Well, I mean, in general, it's understood that the Quran was revealed to him in piecemeal. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't revealed in all, all at once. Okay. Uh, but uh, 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 chapters and verses of the Quran yeah. were revealed in different contexts. And generally, the Quran can be divided up into two parts. Okay. So some chapters are from the, the Meccan phase, which lasted for about 13 years. Okay. And other chapters are from the Medina phase, yeah. which lasted for the last part of his mission for 10 years. Yeah. Um, and within those Meccan chapters and Medina chapters, you can have verses which are from the Meccan period or vice, vice versa. Okay. Um, and uh, often these uh, verses that came as guidance or as instructions, mm. uh, something would happen and then God would reveal the message, like the, the word of the Lord would come to him yeah. and instructing him on how he should respond. Okay. And so what brought you into Islam, what made you kind of take Muhammad as a, as a prophet? Um, well, this goes back like maybe about 20 years ago. Okay. Um, so even though I'm, my background is um, South Asian, Pakistani, um, I, I was born and raised um, as a Muslim and okay. I've always been God conscious. Uh, but really it was like towards my late teens um, where I finished um, full-time education mm. I just begin to think about what I wanted to do with my life okay. and I was going through like certain challenges and difficulties and just those types of questions made me like question my own life and my own purpose and why you know did people have to go through like pain and suffering and so I got invited to the mosque and then I started to go to the mosque more regularly okay. and I found like the, the, the questions that I had in my mind without me asking them I thought that God was speaking to me like through uh, through people, like through contact with different people and through life experience and also just picking up an English translation of the Quran. Okay. Even though I didn't believe that the Quran is in English, is in English but just reading the, 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 the meaning of, of that just touched me and this made sense to me and it gave me direction and purpose in life. Okay, Cause, so basically I was reading over um, some of the early beginnings. So obviously we see that it says that Muhammad was used to go to the cave to pray to Allah and then he got the, the first revelation, Jibril um, came to him and told him to recite and he said he couldn't recite. But then one of the things I, as a Christian I find uh, quite, um, so yeah as a Christian something I find a bit odd, not maybe the best word, but it says that he went to his cousin, his uncle Warika, who confirmed. So obviously, I've got a hadith. Is this is from Bukhari? Warika, 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 the cousin of Khadija. He yeah. was his wife. So, so in the Bukhari, it says he was an old man and he had lost his eyesight. Khadija said to Warika, "Listen to the story of your nephew, O oh my cousin." Warika asked, "O oh my nephew, what have you seen?" Allah's messenger described whatever he had seen, Warika said, this is the same one who keeps the secrets and in brackets they have Angel Gabriel, whom Allah has sent to Moses. I wish I were young and I could live up to the time when your people would turn you up. So my question would be then how would Warika have known Jibril was Jibril and an, and an angel? Um, like just based upon what you read, yeah. um, it, it mentions that him being related to Khadija and yeah. he was an Arab Christian um, and so he was someone who was familiar mm. with, the, with um, the Old Testament and New Testament prophets. 
So um, there was an expectation, I guess, among the Christians, uh, or at least among the, the Jewish community that migrated there, um, that they were still waiting for the Messiah. Mm. So there was still that expectation that the, that this final prophet or this final savior would come. And so w w Waraka, although he wasn't Jewish, uh, just based upon like his own understanding of, of the, the scriptures that he had before him, uh, he felt that what the experience that the Prophet Muhammad described to him was uh, something similar to how other prophets had a similar type of experience as well. But then what we see in the Bible is that usually an angel would greet them or they would say like, you know, when the Gabriel came to, um, when the angel came to Mary, it said like, uh, peace be with you. So, you know, when we see in the cave that the, um, what does it say? It says that Gabriel was trying to, start squeezing him as well. So this is not something we see in scripture. So then for Jib Warika to then say, okay, this is angel Gabriel, like as people of the scripture, like Christians, we find this account a bit at odds with what we understand from angels because normally people will see an angel and then kind of they wouldn't be feared but then we see with the story of Muhammad he was actually quite scared of the being yeah the, the difference I would say that is that uh, whereas uh, New Testament Christians as yeah. well as Jews yeah. um, they had a history uh, like a, a background in, in, in Revelation and yeah. messengers coming to them and angels Whereas the the, the the Arabs prior to the revelation of the Quran um, ha, ha, had nothing. They yeah. had uh, no, no history of angels or messengers coming to them. Yeah. Um, so they're giving this as a new experience. Of, yeah. Uh, but then couldn't an angel have or a jinn been pretending to be Angel Jibril? Because then if Warika was the one who identified Jibril mm -hmm. as that spirit, how did because he never saw Jibreel, so he's then making a guess that this could be that angel. But then in the Bible, it says to us, you know, angels, or even a devil can come as an angel of light. So then it's, you know, because obviously we want, you've got Islamic viewpoint, but, you know, for as people of the, the scripture, the Old Testament in Jill, we kind of have more, more as a criteria to say, okay, this account of an angel seems a bit at odds with what we believe because, you know, if Warika didn't see the angel himself then he could have been mistaken what what would you say to that well what I would say to that is um, in in the case of um, angels appearing yeah um, like uh, what Warika understood it like from the message itself like from what he understood from his own reading of the Bible yeah. as well as uh, from the message of Muhammad yeah um, that uh, it is what convinced him that this couldn't have been from anyone else other than, than from God mm -hmm. um, and even today when Muslims today they, they read the Quran this doesn't sound like the devil speaking to them okay. uh, because the Quran invites them to, to worship God not to associate partners with God okay. to, to, to fast for a month to, 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 to pray to, to give charity to, to feed the orphans and the widows and the Quran even says in, in many places um, like in chapter 36 verse number 61 I believe um, that the devil is an open enemy to you. Do not make him as your friend, mm. but worship God instead. Mm. Uh, God invites you towards his mercy, whereas God, uh, whereas, whereas the devil invites you towards, uh, um, like he invites you to follow in his footsteps, uh, okay. whereas God is inviting you towards his forgiveness uh, uh, and mercy. Okay. Uh, so, so this doesn't sound like something that the devil would reveal. Okay. So, because also going back, there to is an idea. For example, there yeah. are some people that read, like um, I, I don't know how it is true this is, but people like Jay Z, yeah, or the uh, Illuminati, they read the, the, the story account in Genesis, okay, and they understand the devil is not actually your enemy, but in, instead the devil is someone who was misunderstood. Well, uh, and they get this from, from the Bible. Well, the biblical, if someone reading the Quran, they would no way go away thinking that. Well, that's the thing because I think in the Quran it portrays Satan as very differently from the Bible. So in the New Testament, Jesus says to them, uh, um, the, "The devil is like a roaring lion, waiting to devour." Now, a first-century Jew, you know, people are fed to lions, so a roaring lion would be a lion out in the wilderness. So, 
So they would have taken this as very serious that the, 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 the Satan is a deceiver and a devourer. So from the Old Testament, the position of Satan is not clarified. But in the, when Jesus came, he clarified the position of Satan. So we know Satan is someone to be very wary of. Because well, I mean, there is like the, I believe the Illuminati, they read, for example, like when yeah. the devil says to Adam, you will not die. Yeah. And that's what happened. Adam didn't die, but he actually went on to live for another 900. So they would say that it looks like the devil was right. Well, that was in, in that sense, because what God is saying is they will die. They, they, they were disconnected from the glory of God because that's why they were kicked out of their garden of, of Eden. So it's like a spirit. So it looks like it's the devil was actually helping Adam. Like well, it, whereas it's God is the one from the Bible who seems to be driving. Well, it was a spirit. It, it, it was or, a spiritual death. Okay. Because we believe now. This is why Christ had to come to reconcile us to bring us back to God. Because Adam and Eve had a perfect relationship with God, walking in in Eden in paradise. But that disconnects. So is what was a spiritual death not a physical death so therefore if you're reading into a physical death that's not what the bible was communicating um but i was also just i was reading um ibn ashaq so it says in terms of when they were with the prophet it says um that khadija made a test to see if jibril was was um, a real a real angel okay. so it says um so, Khadija said to the prophet, Dear cousin, can you inform me whether this friend of yours came to you, is here with you or not? He said, Yes. She said, If he comes to you, then tell me. So then the blessed angel Jibril came to Prophet Muhammad just as he did before. And the prophet uh, said to Khadija, Dear Khadija, Gabriel did come to me. Khadija then said, Stand up, dear cousin, and sit on my left thigh. So the prophet stood up and sat on the right thigh of Khadija. She said, Do you see him? He said, yes, she said, turn around and sit on my right thigh. So then the prophet turned around and sat on her right thigh. She said, do you see him? He said, yes. So she said, turn around and sit on my lap. So he turned around and sat on her lap. She said, do you see him? He said, yes. So, so said Khadija sighed and lifted her scarf and the prophet was sitting on her lap. And then Khadija said to the prophet, do you see him? He said, no. She said, dear cousin, it has been affirmed and with good news that he is really an angel, not a devil. So basically she exposed herself a little bit. Not, it doesn't say specifically how, but then she, the angel apparently disappeared. So therefore this was her criteria that because it didn't stay, it was an angel, not a devil. It's in the Bukhari as well. I'll just give you the other account. So, because this goes with Ibn Ishaq. Um, let me just show you. I'm not sure if you're aware of that story. No, it's the first time I've heard it. Okay, let me just get it from but, Bukhari as well, um, so you can see. But you know, my faith isn't built upon Ibn Ishaq or Bukhari. Okay, okay. It's built upon the Quran, so what yeah, the Quran yeah. says is okay. what I believe. So, because the Quran is so derogatory towards the devil, yeah. like it said verses like, I seek refuge in God, like yeah. Lord of the world. Okay. And when you recite the Quran, seek refuge in God against the Satan, the outcast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so things like that wouldn't make sense. For okay. The to, uh, so, so then what about when we have this story of the Satanic verses? Because if we go to Quran 22, uh, 52 and 53, it says, and we did not send before you any messenger or prophet except that when he spoke, Satan threw into it some misunderstanding, but Satan abolishes that which Satan throws in. Then Allah makes precise his verses, and Allah is all knowing and wise. And then we go to 53. It says, So he makes what Satan throws in a trial for those wherein his heart is a disease, and those hard of heart, and indeed the wrongdoers are in extreme dissension. Then, obviously, to understand these verses, we obviously go into like the tafsirs, and I'll go into Wahidi. So he says in his um, tafsir, says the messenger of Allah bless him gave given peace recited it but when he reached uh, have ye thought upon Alat al Uza and Manat the third one the devil put on his tongue what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said these are the mighty cranes and their intercession is hopeful when the Quraysh heard this they were very pleased with him 
and Messenger of Allah blessed him and given peace, carried on reciting until the end of the surah and prostrated. All the Muslims followed suit and prostrated and all the idolaters were prostrated too. Then he goes on and it says, Then Jibril, peace be upon him, came to the Messenger of Allah, blessed him and given peace and said, Read back me the speech which Allah, speech of Allah. Then he read it. Gabriel said, As for this, I did not bring it, bring this from, this is from the devil. And so Allah exalted as he revealed, Never we sent a messenger or prophet before thee. But when he recited the message, Satan proposed opposition in respect of that which he recited thereof. But Allah abolishes that which Satan proposeth, then establish his revelation. So if I just quickly go back again. So originally, he, the verses were by the star, when it sets, your comrade does not err, and is, he is not deceived, nor does he speak out of his own desire. And when he came to the words, have you thought about upon Alat and al Uzza and Manat the third, the other, Satan cast on his tongue because of his inner debates and what he had desired to bring people the words, these are the high flying cranes, verily their intercessions is accepted with approval. So then this relates to the Quran where when we look at it now, it doesn't have these words, but it was abrogated. So then, because you said about the words of Allah, so. So you know who is reporting that story and was that person himself an eyewitness? Okay, so from Wahidi, is he like a, an eyewitness to the event, or is well, he reporting from hearsay? Do you know who Ibn Hajar is? Ibn Hajar is um, the Hadith commentator for Bukhari, who okay. lived like a couple of hundred years after Bukhari. Who okay. Bukhari himself lived a couple of hundred years after. Okay, so he says generation. that uh, regarding this, that the. He says, so as he said, when, when, when the parts of hadith are many and distinct, it shows the report has a basis. So as I said, there are three sound but merciful chains for it. Amongst them, what meets the criteria of the two sahihs, but for the fact that they are merciful, these constitute proof for both these that accept merciful reports as proofs and those that do not due to the mutual strengthening of the chains. So basically what he says is there are um, enough reliable chains to establish it as a sound hadith. But you have to understand how Ibn Hajar Asqalani, for example, uh, the definition of like terminologies in uses. So when he refers to a chain being sahih, it doesn't mean that the content itself is, is of certain knowledge. Because if you read the introduction back like, to his commentary to Bahari, he says like when a, when a chain has been classified as being correct or sahih yeah that just means 50 50 so maybe the prophet said it but okay. there's still another 50 percent chance that maybe the prophet didn't say it because most hadiths are probabilistic on their nature okay and um certain hadiths like are more sound than compared to other hadiths because we've got um and just validating the chain only brings it up to 50. well so therefore it, sh it has a certain level of reliability because if we go to but there's also um, 50 times that it's false as well it's not true well if we go to uh al razi so he yeah, says so al razi is a bit later as well so he says it is reported from atta that ibn abbas said a devil called al abid came to the prophet in the form of jibril and cast these words satanic verses upon him and the prophet recited them when the pagans heard it it pleased them thereupon jibril came and asked him to rehear the revelation to him so when did akha live and when did imam razi live in order for him to hear that statement but then they're taking it from ibn abbas but but the ibn abbas and uh, imam razi are from two different generations yeah but but obviously you have your chains of narration and stuff like that so regardless yeah. of it's like bukhari did not live at the time yeah. of the prophet so but obviously he's getting it from somewhere yeah so he but, said but is, ibn abbas but, 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 but ibn abbas and him weren't contemporary so, well, so he, he has to rely on someone else yeah but then would you accept bukhari hadith um uh, on the basis of like the, not just the chain but also on the basis of the context okay because you know there's also textual criticism as well okay like of hadith literature but do you so, feel bukhari's like authentic or do you like, do you accept Bukhari um, as Sahih? My, my, my view is that it seems there's another book known as um, the Muwatta of Imam Malik. Okay. And that's based upon, uh, he, Imam Malik was before Imam Bukhari. Okay. And that, whereas uh, Imam Bukhari generally is relying upon 
um, isolate like like single reports known as Habul al Habul al Ahad reports, okay. which are like a single narration. Okay. Uh, whereas the Muwatta of Imam Malik is based upon the customs and practices of the people of Medina. Okay. So it's not just one person, but it's what he saw. You know what was the cut the norm or normative practice okay and he recorded that so that that's more likely to be more dependable okay than, say if one person can't do something so you reject bukhari I, I don't reject bukhari but i just don't follow it blindly like okay. i try to be critical okay so like when it comes to your belief when yeah. it comes to matters of salvation i don't just simply take a report just because someone says it but then if they're attributing a similar story from ibn abbas wouldn't that have come through a chain? But there's many reports of Ibn Abbas yeah. and some of them contradict one another okay. and not all of them are like reliably like reported from him as well. Okay. So, so not, yeah, yeah. So not okay. everything actually Ibn Abbas was actually said by Ibn Abbas. Okay. But Ibn Abbas name was actually used in order to for political motives and agendas okay. like to validate them. So do you know like you have pseudo anonymous writers or pseudo pickles? Okay. So like you have writings done in the names of James, yeah. like the acts of Peter, I think it is, and yeah. Mary Magdalene. But then Even Ibn Hajar does. Never wrote those but books. then Ibn Hajar does kind of verify this saying that it does come from three authentic chains. So then it gives the story more credible. Because the re the point I was trying to make is because Ibn Abbas speaks about a deity called Al -Ab Abayd, and I'll just show you. So basically, this is Al Abayd. It's, it's, so basically, it says Al Abayd. Al Abayd is the white king, is the lord of Monday, the moon Omar, Kumar, the colour white, the metal silver, and is monitored by the angel Jibril. So when we look at it, it says basically there are seven kings of jinn traditionally associated with days of the week. Monday, and so basically he's the jinn of Monday. Now there's a, a very well, I've heard the seven days of the week also have the origins in Greek, like named after like yeah. Greek goddesses or something. Or so, so there's a very well known, famous um, Islamic book called Al Raki Al Matum. You know this book? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. So in the book, it says but as it's, it's a modern biography. It's not some. It's done something like in the past century. Uh, like this is 1399. Okay, 1979. Yeah, 1979. So like uh, last century. Yeah. So it says, as far as the ex so this is talking about the day of revelation in the cave. Okay. So it says, as far as the exact date, careful investigation into the circumstantial evidence point directly to Monday. Okay. But then we just saw this uh, jinn. He's also the Lord of Monday. Okay. But then we see also Ibn Abbas says a devil called Al Abayd came to the Prophet in the form of Jibril. So then that's why I'm asking you about the criteria in the cave, because we know that he received a revelation on Monday. Yes, yeah, so I don't know where from, they got that from about the names of the days being names after jinns, because uh, linguistically, like the uh, sort of Monday is yeah. Yom or If, yeah. which uh, If means two. Okay. So Yom is day. Yeah. And so Monday is basically the second day of the week. Okay. Literally, like in the Arabic language. Okay. Just like religiously in the Jewish calendar, Monday is also seen as the second day and Sunday is seen as the first day. Okay. So in Arabic, Monday will be Yom or If. Okay. Which is, um, but then I think the jinns is not necessarily related to the word. I don't word. really know where they got the idea, like. Well, Tuesday is the name of this jinn, Wednesday is the name of this jinn, and so on. Well, I mean, this is like uh, tradition, so obviously it's traditionally yeah, you know, associated with days of the week. So there's Catholic tradition. And well, this is, but this is why I'm asking. Mean it's but this is why I'm asking true, as yeah. well because this tradition is saying that you have jinns, days of the week. The revelation came on a Monday, and then I said to you, as a Christian, Warika not seeing this angel, but saying it was Jibril. How would he know? Because we had two criteria. One was from Marika, and then uh, the other was Fatima, saying, sit on my left leg, sit on my right thigh. But we never see this criteria in the Bible. So then how would they have been able to establish this was Jibril from their criteria, which is not based on scripture? Yeah, so based upon that uh, criteria that they're using, 
um, like uh, if you just put aside whether those reports are true yeah. to begin with or not, um, it's up to you whether you want to believe in that factor or not. Mm. But I personally wouldn't find that convincing. Yeah. And uh, I would personally recommend the person to read the Quran itself, okay. and understand the message, okay. and whether the message itself makes sense, whether it could really come from Satan or was it. So, so my question would be to this then. Let's just thought experiment. Let's say it was a jinn that visited Muhammad. And you say the Quran is unparalleled, like in terms of its linguistic style. How would we know this linguistic miracle couldn't come from a jinn? Um, well, the, the Quran itself says, like, like if there were like other jinns, yeah. and, and if mankind was to come together yeah. and like you know support one another, uh, they would not be able to produce something like the Quran because like, if it was from a jinn, yeah. then the Quran it would say that it is from a jinn, well, the, and the, no the, one can match it. Well, the Bible says but that it, the devil can come in, in the form of an angel of light. So a jinn could lie to you and oh. say my criteria let's say the jinn is the like let's say its ability was in linguistics mm -hmm. so therefore then how could you disprove the jinn from its own criteria then why would the jinn want to have a message in which it takes people away from devil worship from idol worship and turns people towards belief in jesus that, um, that's a very and good belief question in, belief in one god not to associate partners not to associate muhammad who's gone um, not to attribute sons and daughters with God and to believe in the afterlife, to be held accountable for your own actions and to do good, to feed the poor, to, to free the slaves for example. Like in Surah 90, uh, the Quran says the uh, is, you know, uphill path is actually to free slaves. Okay, um, so, uh, so why uh, would a jinn reveal something like that and not take any credit for it? Okay, um, so I'll give you two... And also why weren't there other jinns that could not also produce something like that's the Quran. So I'll give you the case. two answers to that. Uh, the first one, we go to Genesis 3.1 and this is when um, Eve was tempted. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And obviously he said, he said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of the tree in the garden and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree in the garden. So this is what you alluded to before. But the most important thing is it says, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field of the Lord. So therefore we establish from the Genesis that the, the Satan is trying to always lead people away from God. And I'll give you the other verse, because basically Paul says, without the resurrection, we have no faith. This is like the core doctrine of our belief. So clearly we see in the Quran, it says it was made to appear as he was crucified, but he was not. So therefore the Quran actually de denies the very central core belief of Christianity. So without in Christianity, if you don't believe in a resurrection, there is no salvation. But then this how, how jinn... How do you know that wasn't Satan who said basically the resurrection is the crux of Christianity? Well, because and then the Quran, that, God revealed that's a very good question. Yeah. Now, the reason why we have firmer ground is because God knew this in his foreknowledge. And this is why in the Old Testament, there are prophecies which say that the Messiah, will, in Isaiah 53, it says he will be wounded for our transgressions, he will be pierced for our sins, he will be wounded for our iniquities. And there's many verses in the Where's Old Testament. Where's the resurrection in Isaiah 53? Well, in terms of, let's see what it says in Isaiah 3, 53. Let me just go through it so we can... Yeah, it's, it's the suffering serpent, so... That the Messiah because, will suffer and then yeah. on the third day be raised from the dead. Well, in terms of the Bible, the, 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 the prophecies are interwoven throughout the Old Testament. This was the way for God to protect his word, his prophecies. So therefore, we, our criteria is based on the Old Testament. So that's why when I ask you, and before because, you because, you're, because, because, you're, because, because your criteria is based on the, um, the Quran itself. That's why I ask you, if the jinn said this, how would you know the jinn wasn't lying? Because you can only use the Quran to, to, um, as a verification, verification so if the for itself. Said that, then what type of things would you expect the jinn to say? It, it doesn't sound like. Well, I would what expect I would Quran. expect the jinn to say something which 
took you away from true salvation because if the cru crucifixion but then you're fiction, coming from your own Christian bias from no, your Pauline Christianity because Pauline Christianity is consistent with Old Testament theology so let's go to Isaiah who has believed what he has heard from us and whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed for he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground he has no form of majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and as one of whom men hide their faces he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteem him stricken smitten by God and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities so obviously Jesus was pierced on the cross and then it says uh, upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed we are like sheep we have gone astray we have turned everyone to his way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all there it says the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all that's all our sins that's why we say Jesus came to bear our sins the speaker. the speaker is God revealing this to but God Isaiah. himself is that laying his iniquity upon the suffering servant because Look, God has no sin to lay yeah, upon so, so it's saying so when obviously it, the speaker is not God well it's talking about as in terms of humanity so it's like a, in the form of like he's telling him to write let's say recite this to the people I mean, so the my people understanding is that this was during the Babylonian exile and this is the Babylonians that are speaking and they're speaking about the way they treated this suffering servant how they how they did the oppression upon that suffering servant but it well, also speaks about like his days being prolonged yeah but let so me just finish let me just peace. finish this uh, about three more verses so it says he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is before its shearers is silent but he opened not his mouth so therefore we clearly see it's describing some for, for someone taking punishment for someone else this is why we believe Jesus died on the cross because it's in consistency with the Old Testament old the sacrifices of a lamb because they used to have something called the day of atonement they'll kill a lamb or two goats or whatever and it will bear the, the yeah so Jesus was the, like the new lamb taken all the iniquity of the mankind so this was Jesus is quite I would love to continue this yeah. um, you've got to uh, go soon uh, thank you for your time okay. you've been very grateful so okay. I appreciate it no worries because you do have to go um, let, we can always yeah. carry on we know these types of discussions are, okay cool they don't always you know take yeah you did so, more than just so one, yeah, yeah. So, so basically just to wrap up because what we see in the Islamic literature because in the, in the Quran Allah also says that his prophets and the, the Muslims are protected from Satan but then we see the satanic verses yeah. where to see which verse you're referring yeah, to maybe next, next time, time we can continue yeah, so therefore we also see that um, he was a, he had the satanic verses because we have to ask ourselves what was it that Satan put in his mouth that uh, Allah had to take out the only stories we have is the satanic verses and we also hear the narration there was a white jinn the jinn of Monday and the revelation was also revealed on a Monday so then this comes leads us to the question how do we know this was a true spirit of God may, may I recommend a dialogue um, on this topic okay um, it's between David Wood and Bassem Zawadi okay um, I forgot the, the subject okay. uh, of, of the title of the video but they, they discussed the satanic verses and okay. recommend that to you and whoever's watching so, okay uh, maybe we can discuss it next yeah time definitely future, definitely yeah? it was nice okay, speaking cool. to you. you if we can time. do some more research yes. and then we can go into it because then okay. maybe you have more sure. things to say in yeah. return cool. thank cool. you so much right, thank uh, yeah, so I mean, he's a nice Muslim. Had a co very cordial discussion. Sometimes something you don't always have. Um, but clearly, what we see in Islam is that the criteria for judging a, a, an angel was nothing based on anything biblical. So we have to ask ourselves: How did they identify that this was a a true angel? Because even Paul says, if anyone preaches another gospel from the one that we have given to you even if it's an angel let this person be accursed and obviously because he asked a good question how do we know Jesus wasn't like a false prophet or blah 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 but we go to the Old Testament because it gives out the criteria 
that we had that the people had to use to understand that Jesus was the one who fulfilled this criteria therefore they would not be led astray but then when we go to like Muslims they have the, the Quran which is their own uh, it validates themselves because it says uh, it's a linguistic miracle therefore if anyone else can't produce it it's from God but this is something very simple like let's say a jinn or a, a, a devil could easily say let's say because we know the, the devil has many talents so therefore it's not evidence of itself it doesn't conform to any previous testimonies or prophecies or anything like that so therefore we again have to say is there any stories of prophets who sat who sat on someone's leg and moved to their right leg and left leg and then they all decided that this was an angel or was there an angel that went and started squeezing someone and tell him to recite something and they said they couldn't this is very unfamiliar territory with Christians or even Jews so therefore we will hopefully maybe have another conversation but clearly we see when we look at the all historic sources they seem to point towards that the satanic verses and there was a jinn that seemed to follow Muhammad around but we didn't have enough time to go into it but hopefully next time um, we'll go into it but all those who are watching especially Muslims you know we point you to Romans 10 9 that everyone who confesses with in his heart and with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord shall truly be saved so we will invite you to Christ and hopefully next week we'll have another discussion Thank you.